Welcome to the Backyard Chapel. We're the BYC here in Texas, and I'm Jason York, the pastor here. First and foremost, before we get started today, I would like to invite you to grab a pen and paper, write down these scriptures. I'm not going to break everything down. I'm going to give you guys the skeleton to form this thing on, and you guys go home and you put the meat on those bones. The key is to study, to doing it yourself. The Bible says we all work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That means you're in charge between you and God. So don't trust everything I say and don't trust everything that anyone else says. Study it for yourself. Become knowledgeable. Once again, welcome. Thank you. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Welcome. Welcome to the BYC, the Backyard Chapel. Today's message is about signs and knowing your signs and being able to read your signs. But before we begin, I'd like to ask the Holy Spirit to, to take control and be in charge. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and I ask that you would utilize me today. That you would bring forth a message that is powerful and true. Heavenly Father, I ask that you open our ears and our hearts to hear what you would say. Clear our minds of all things that would distract us. Help us to focus on you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. In your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. It, it makes me laugh. You know, about, uh, I guess it's not nice to say stupid people, but there are so many people in our lives. There's so many people that, that think they know something they don't know. Every one of us knows a know-it-all. You know, so in today's message, we're going to talk about reading your signs. The signs that God has put up for each one of us along our journey. In life, a lot of times we miss signs. We misread what that sign says. Maybe, you know, we think that it means this or it means that when actually it's something totally different. Or a lot of times we're reading signs that God hasn't even put there. It's the devil that's put them in our way. You know, I heard a joke one time about a, a, a cop and he's, He's parked alongside the road and he's got his radar detector and he's, you know, hitting all these people as they come by, speeds and all that. And all of a sudden his car comes by and his car is driving 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour. Every one of us has been behind one of those people. But anyway, so the cop says, I got I to gotta check this out. I got to see what this is about. So he pulls over the car and he walks up to the window. It's his little gray-haired old lady. And she's sitting there with her hands on the wheel and everything. She says, I, I don't understand why you're pulling me over, officer. And he says to her, he says, listen, ma'am, uh, you know, driving over the speed limit is just as dangerous at times as driving so slow underneath it. And the cop's looking in the car and he sees that there's three ladies in the back and one in the side seat. And they're all shaking and scared like the eyes are huge. And he's, oh, I wonder what's going on here. So... He asked the lady, he says, ma'am, can I ask you why you're driving 20 miles an hour? And she goes, well, I'm doing the speed limit, officer. And he says, ma'am, the speed limit here is 65 miles an hour. And she goes, that's not true. I saw a sign back there that said 20. He goes, ma'am, that's route 20. And she goes, oh, that would explain why they're so scared. We just came off Route 95. <laughs> so the point of that is she misread signs. She misread a sign. She didn't exactly know what it was. Or a lot of times in our lives, we see a sign and we know, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that without paying attention to what's behind the sign, to what the sign's really about. So like I was saying, we all have those people in our lives. And a lot of those people, well, I can't say a lot of those people. There's a good number of those people in your life that you take their word. You listen to them. What I want you to understand is that I don't want you to take everybody's word for granted. It doesn't, doesn't matter who they are, whether they're a pastor of a giant mega church or just a little old guy in a field talking to y'all. Don't take their word for granted, please. It's imperative that you do your own research. The Bible talks about, in Matthew 7, it talks about false prophets and things like that. You know, and a lot of people think that that's, oh my gosh, that's a prophet and all that. It, you know what? It's an everyday life. 
It's an everyday event that we go through. See, the Bible talks about you need to check the fruit. See, because a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit. But in the same breath, a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. And it talks about in the Bible that a bad tree bearing bad fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So what I'm saying is, those people that you take advice from or you listen to, you need to look at the fruit of their life. And I'm not talking about how they act on Sunday or how they act around certain people, how they act by themselves, how they act when, when they're away from those events. Watch them. Look how people interact with them. Learn from that. Because that's the fruit. What's producing from them. So don't take everybody's word for granted. Do your own studies. Another thing I, I would say is don't trust what you don't know. And what I mean by that is if you don't know something and someone else says that they do know something, don't take that. Don't, don't, don't just live by that. You need to research. I mean, golly, Google makes it so easy these days. You can Google anything. Google anything and there's a half a million different things. So what you do is in, in Matthew, Seven, Matthew 7 says, ask, seek, and knock. And what that means is you ask God. You seek out those things and knock. The Bible says that door will be opened. See, allowing the Holy Spirit to come in. Allowing the Holy Spirit to give you that revelation knowledge of, is this of God? Is this not of God? Is, is this of the devil bringing it across my path? Is this something I should pay attention to? Is this something I just should cast aside and get rid of. See, we need to do it like our life depends on it. Because you know what? It does. Our lives depend on this. Not this life here in the earth, although some decisions we make may inhibit that. But they, anyway, but what I'm saying is that our spiritual life and our life beyond this earth depends on it. One of the classic things that I've seen so many people, and I've done it myself, you know, is living in the past. We need to continue to keep moving forward. See, moving forward is, is the driving thing. That, that's the thing that gives us that energy, every step that we take. You know, they say, I heard someone speak once, and he said, the, the biggest step you'll ever take will be that first one, that first step. Because once you take that first step, you're like, hey, all right, this is good. I got this. Right? Keep moving forward. Don't keep looking in the rearview mirror. In Luke 9, it talks about um, plowing the field. And someone that plows a field, always looking back, is worthless because he's, he's going to be way off track all the time. He's not focused. You need to be focused on what it is. So, what I'm saying is, when, when you're driving a car, you don't continually stare in that rearview mirror because you can't see what's in front of you. So, forget the former things. Because God's trying to do a new thing in you. And the Bible says in Isaiah 43, cast those things aside. Get rid of the past. Move forward. We need to all, all of us have something in our lives that's, that's hindering us and baggage. I did a, a, an event with the youth group once and what I did was I took a hundred dollar bill and I put it on the floor and then I had a whole bunch of suitcases and bags and everything and I made them all pick them up and carry them they got them all on their backs and they're holding them and hands are full and everything and I tell them now without dropping a bag pick up that hundred dollar bill they can't do it because they're full see in our lives we fill ourselves with so much baggage and so many things in our lives that we can't get forward we just feel so burdened and weighed down and the Bible says in Isaiah to get rid of those we must Forgive. Most difficult thing in life is forgiving. I don't understand. But it is. It's hard. It's hard to forgive. But in Matthew 6, it says we must forgive in order to be forgiven. So we have to forgive in order for God to forgive us. That's something that's not being taught. That's something that people don't. They breeze over. I've talked to many friends and they're like, what? I didn't know that. I've never seen that. Yeah, but that's what God says. So, 
What I want to share is, is that life can be hard. Life can be difficult. And what I want to tell you is that in James 1, James 1 says, blessed is he who perseveres. He who presses on and gets through it, he who overcomes it, he is blessed. And how do we do that? How do we overcome those things in our lives? How do we ask forgiveness? How do we get rid of that crap in our lives that we hold on to? The power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sent for that specific reason. To give us the energy, the strength, the power, and the authority to overcome those things. And that's a stumbling block in your life. Whether it's, it's being able to forgive those people that hurt us. Social media, they said this, they said that. It's all garbage. It's, it's just something that has come against you and latched onto you. You have to get rid of it. The power of the Holy Spirit will enable you to overcome that. How do we do that? How does that happen? You need to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. To have authority over those things. Give them authority. The Bible states you're going to be attacked. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says that if you are a follower of Christ, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be attacked. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, where. But let me tell you something. That's a good thing. If the devil's coming after you, that means you're doing something right. I want you to fully understand the power and the authority that we have. We are children of the King, and He has given us power and authority over all the things of the world. Greater is in He than greater is in the world. God is in us, and He is greater than anything that come against us. Overcome those things in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Get past all that crap in your life. Get past, walk out of it. Step right out of it. Take that first step, the most difficult step. We have to do it in order to survive, in order to overcome these things. We have to. And we have to continually watch our ears and our eyes and the things that we see and hear and make sure that they are of God. Make sure that they are what God wants for each one of us. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Invite Him in. Heavenly Father, we invite you. Holy Spirit, we give you dominion and power and authority over us. Help us to overcome these things in our lives. It's the only way. The only way we're going to make it. And with the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you, you can persevere. And maybe today that there are some people out there that say, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to allow God in. I don't know how. So I'll tell you right now, let's do it. Let's do it. If you're in that spot and you say, I am struggling, I'm difficult, these things are hard for me, and you want that Holy Spirit to overcome. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you would fill me, that you would forgive me of my sins, that I may be forgiven. Heavenly Father, please, please be a part of my life. I give you authority. I give you power. I give you dominion. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the one who was and is and is to come. You're the new and everlasting. You're the Alpha and Omega. And I am your servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. Have a good day. Go with God.